The most amazing thing happened to me this week. I was minding my own business, practicing, and I heard something outside our house where a stream runs by. Why, it was Ryan Beatty, the famous opera singer, and he was singing and fishing and having a great time. What else could I do? I grabbed my fishing hat and accompanied him. In einem Bächlein helle, da schoss im frohe Eil die launische Forelle vorüber wie ein Pfeil. Ich stand an dem Gestade und sah in süße Ruh des munten Fischleins Bade im klaren Bächlein zu. Des munten Fischleins Bade im klaren Bächlein zu. Ein Fischer mit der Rute wohl an dem Ufer stand und saß mit kaltem Blute, wie sich das Fischlein wand. So lang dem Wasser helle, so dacht ich nicht gebricht, so fängt er die Forelle mit seiner Angel nicht. So fängt er die Forelle mit seiner Angel nicht. Doch endlich war dem Diebe die Zeit zu lang. Er macht das Bäcklein tückisch Triebe und ehe ich es getagt, so zogte seine Rute das Fischlein, das Fischlein zappelt dran. Und ich mit regem Blute da die Betrogne an. Und ich mit regem Blute sah die Betrogne an. I'm going to ask Ryan a few questions. He's outside and I'm inside, so let's find out about Di Forella. So what do you know about Di Forella? How does it stand out among other Schubert leader? Well, uh, Schubert's masterful use of the piano as playing a character uh, shows up all over his music. Um, in his great song cycle, Die Schöne Müllerin, uh, the, the uh, the piano plays various parts from the turning of the mill wheel to the brook. And in this case of Di Forelle, uh, the piano is playing the, the part of the, the rushing brook, das Bächlein, here. And um, the singer, um, the first verse is sort of from a, from a, a watcher's perspective. And uh, in the second verse, he talks about how a, a fisherman picks up his rod and, and starts going after the fish. And, and in the third verse, he makes a you know, makes the water all, all muddy and just as just as he thinks it, it might be all over, uh, he can see the, the fish there. Great, great. My favorite part is the when the sinister part, the piano plays in a very low sinister Absolutely. register. And I also notice at that point, you're singing kind of like it's one pitch for a long time. Mm -hmm. It's almost as if you're hiding in the bushes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it, it was really great to listen to you sing and hopefully you'll be able to join us another time on learn and love music i would be happy to you just heard a beautiful performance of schubert's die forella by ryan Beatty. schubert also wrote it into a quintet for piano and strings where he used die forella theme in the fourth movement of that piece but Franz Liszt, the virtuoso pianist of the 19th century, he also loved the melody and he decided he would write a paraphrase or sort of a fantasy on D. 
Di Forbella. I'm going to play that fantasy for you today, but I want you to listen to some very important parts of that. You'll always hear the melody, so you'll always hear this theme. But Liszt also threw in a lot of the the babbling brook in the background. But Liszt takes it to a different level than Schubert. He makes it into a grand fantasy, and he makes it very difficult. Some really beautiful passage work. And in the middle of the piece, we hear the same theme again, but then he creates these octaves. It's a little bit like doing a, it's acrobatics at the piano. Very, very difficult. But all the while, you hear the theme underneath. I call that burying the theme. So always be listening for that theme. Also, Liszt, typical of Liszt, he writes a cadenza in it. Schubert didn't write any cadenza in it. But Liszt thought, let's do something fancy at the end of this. So he does. Is this really fancy music that is very Listian. It doesn't sound anything like Schubert, but the Schubert themes that Liszt use are beautiful, but they're decorated in a very Listian way. Now let's listen to Di Forella as arranged by Franz Liszt. Make sure you subscribe to this channel because we want to see you back again, and I hope you enjoy some Schubert Liszt. D. Forella.